So hi everyone, I am Dr. Deepthi and today I will be discussing the Obzingaini CBT questions of the second FMG test paper, right? I hope you have done well, but let's make the most out of this discussion and try and keep it concise, crisp and high yielding. Okay, chalo. A 28 week pregnant woman presents with hypertension for the first time. There is no protein urea. So, if protein urea nahi hota hai, then what is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is gestational hypertension. Why not chronic? Because in chronic, the POG has to be less than 20 weeks. Right? Why not preeclampsia? Because here the hypertension should be present with uh, either of the two or both. Hai na? Isme kya kya aata hai? Number one, she could have protein urea. ठीक और नंबर टू शी कुड हैव व्हाट एंड ऑर्गन डैमेज है ना ओनली देन यू विल से दैट इट इज प्रीएक्लैम्पिया रिमेंबर प्रोटीन यूरिया जो है बच्चे वो डिपस्टिक में इट हैज टू बी मोर देन और इक्वल टू प्लस टू ठीक एंड व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट ट्वेंटी फोर आवर यूरिन प्रोटीन देन इट हैज टू बी मोर देन और इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट Three grams or three hundred milligrams in a twenty-four hour urine sample. Remember criteria for end organ damage. है ना उसमें क्या क्या आता है? Liver enzymes more than twice. Second क्या था? Creatinine more than one point one. फिर क्या था? Platelet count less than one lakh. और क्या था? If the patient has pulmonary edema. Or if she has any cerebral or visual symptoms. Cerebral symptoms ka matlab kya hua? Headache ho gaya, right? Dizziness ho gaya. So if my patient has any of these, then we will call it as end organ damage. Or end organ damage se it becomes severe preeclampsia, not just preeclampsia, okay? Chalo. Which hormone is represented by the green line. So, I told you how to see it. If you see two peaks, one before ovulation, right, and one after ovulation, then this is estrogen. Yes, if you see two peaks, one before and one at the time, then that becomes FSH. If you see only one peak at the time of ovulation. So, hormone C becomes LH and if you see only one peak after ovulation, that is A, it becomes progesterone. Okay, so know this. Okay, identify the HSG image. So, this is a typical image of uniconuate uterus. Remember, uniconuate uterus, it is going to look banana shaped. And it is going to be deviated to one side. Hai na? So, deviated to one side and banana shaped. Uh, beta ji, most common Mullerian anomaly kaun si hai? It is septate. Theek hai? Remember, septate is the one which is associated mostly with recurrent pregnancy loss as well as infertility. And we say it has worst outcome. Theek? Uniconuate ke liye, please remember here the patient can have unilateral dysmenorrhea. The patient can have ectopic pregnancy. The patient can also have ectopic ovary. And very, very important, although all Mullerian anomalies can cause urinary tract anomalies, unicornuate uterus has highest risk. Okay, it has highest risk of urinary tract anomalies. So, you must evaluate with ultrasound KUB in all patients with Mullerian anomalies, especially in women with uniconuate. All right? Shallow. Which one will be associated with vaginal pH of 4.5? Now, please remember, in trichomonas and in gardenella kya hai? Bacterial vaginosis. You have to know the organism also. In both, the pH will be more than 4.5. What about atrophic vaginitis? Atrophic vaginitis is what you see in postmenopausal women. 
which means no estrogen, which means the pH will be again more than 4.5. So, in candida, yes, the pH is usually less than 4.5, even in physiological discharge, the pH is less than 4.5, right? Please remember in candida, the discharge is not foul smelling. I am sure you all know that it is curdy white, but it is not foul smelling. And most importantly, the chief complaint is not discharge, it is pruritus. Physiological would be not foul smelling and there has to be no pruritus. In fact, no complaints, it is normal, right? And physiological discharge is usually colorless, right? So, sometimes they might say white, right? But it is usually colorless. Even if they write white, it has to be non-foul smelling. It has to be not associated with pruritus. Chalo, aage bade. Meigs syndrome. So, Meigs, aapko yaad hona chahiye. I taught you it is a condition where there is a triad, right? The triad was... Fibroma, ascites, and pleural effusion. So, hydrothorax kya hota hai? Pleural effusion, right? And fibroma, please remember, is a benign ovarian tumor. Now, uh, agar aapko yaad ho, in DFX also I have taught you that Meigs syndrome can be seen with fibroma, thecoma, granulosa cell, as well as Brenner's. But, so all these four with ascites and effusion is Meigs. But single best hamesha kya hoga? Fibroma. Any other tumor, right? Along with pleural effusion, along with ascites will be called as pseudomegs. Thik hai? Usko pseudomegs kahenge. Meigs syndrome mein ek aur baat yaad rakho. When you remove the tumor, Right? So, whether it is fibroma or any other, you remove the tumor. After removal, ascites and effusion will regress spontaneously. They don't need any treatment. So, you don't need to do anything separately for the ascites and effusion. Hana? Also, please remember, fibroma is what category of ovarian tumor? Aise to the entire category is called as sex cord stromal tumor because wo WHO ek hi category hai. But isme se bhi you have to know that it is actually a stromal tumor. Thik hai? Okay. So, a simple image, you see placenta which is overlying the internal os. So, if it overlies the internal os, it is placenta previa. Remember, investigation of choice, whether they say placenta previa or they say abnormally located placenta, the answer is going to be PVS. And remember, if we ask you low-lying placenta, then it is placenta which is within 2 centimeters of internal os. That is a low-lying. Remember, Treatment of choice is cesarean section. Usually, we will plan it at 37 weeks, but we may do the cesarean early. If the patient has unstable vitals, right, if she has fetal distress or if she has continuous bleeding or if she goes into labor, then yes, you will have to do a cesarean even earlier. You are not going to wait for 37 weeks. Okay. This is something that we've already covered in the other CBT as well. Approval of two doctors is needed when the time period is between 20 to 24 weeks. Remember the other things I taught you? Husband consent not required. Yes. And remember that beyond 24 weeks, you can do it if there is a what? Uh, you know, if there is gross congenital anomaly beyond 24 weeks with approval from the medical board, right? All right, 18-year-old daughter, Meenark, LH, FSH are normal. There is breast development and pubic hair are also normal. 
the vagina is blind, the uterus is absent, karyotype is 46XX. So, they've made it very simple. I mean, we have made it very simple. So, this has to be Muller and agenesis because here it will be XY and I taught you pubic and axillary hair have to be absent. Hey, no? Swires also has to be XY but here the uterus has to be present. Similarly, Turner's 46, sorry, 45 XO, but again the uterus is present and breast development will be absent. So, it is the reverse, right? So, here breast development is absent. Remember, Turner's may and Mullerian may, no gonadectomy. Swires may or AIS may, gonadectomy has to be done. So, I've talked about all this in detail in the first CBT. So, go through that again if you haven't gone through it so far, okay. Identify the image. So, this is an image of Bartholin cyst. How do you identify? The location, okay. So, if the location is posterolateral in vagina, you know, typically we say it is 5 and 7 o'clock positions, then it is a Bartholin cyst. If it is anterolateral, then it is Gartner's. Please remember, if the cyst, Bartholin cyst ki baat kariyo mein, if it is asymptomatic and small, dono chizhi honi chahiye, small matlab, less than 3 cm, then no treatment is required. Only sits, baths, compresses, that's it. But if it is either bigger than 3 cm or it is symptomatic, then you will go and mark the answer as incision and drainage. If they say recurrent cyst, only then mark marsupialization. If they write Bartholin's abscess, because then there will be tenderness, redness, edema in the local area, right, you may even see a pus point or a punctum, then again the answer is incision and drainage. Whenever you do IND, you will put a catheter inside, it is called as a word catheter, okay. So, it is called as a word catheter. Hanji. A woman after delivery has sudden onset of breathlessness, hypotension, she collapses. Uh, there is no excessive blood loss. What is the diagnosis? Right? So, then uh, the answer is going to be amniotic fluid embolism. Right? Why is it not PPH? Because there the main complaint should be blood loss and uh, it will not be immediate shock after delivery. So, it is not immediate shock, right? It will take some time to develop. With inversion, it will be immediate shock after delivery. But in inversion, there is no breathlessness, right? So, when we say breathlessness or we say if it is a, you know, cardiorespiratory failure, right? Then you think of amniotic fluid embolism, okay? So, it will present as sudden onset of breathlessness followed by hypotension. Then there is a cardiac arrest. So, cardiorespiratory failure. Theke? Most women do not survive and they will have, and that is why we say amniotic fluid embolism has a high maternal mortality. In case she survives, she will land up in the second phase of amniotic fluid embolism which is characterized by DIC. So, she will bleed from all sides. Okay. okay. Your patient is on lithium therapy and she conceives. What are you going to see? So, yes, a very characteristic abnormality is called as Epstein's anomaly. Hai na? Okay, PDA kis ke saath milta hai? So, PDA ki jab baat hoti hai, this is something that you would see with rubella, right? Um, then, when we talk about VSD, ASD or endocardial 
cushion defects then this is what you will see with down syndrome so most common is endocardial then vsd then asd you know so please remember uh, you know the teratogenic table that i have given you even in dfx that's super important and very very high yielding so go and revise that for sure okay oligohydramnios will be associated with renal agenesis why I have told you remember whenever there is decrease in the urine output there is oligo if there is increase in the urine output or there is decreased swallowing then this will result in poly see in neural tube defects like anencephaly please remember the reason for poly is decreased swallowing hai na and uh, please remember if it is a post term pregnancy right so which is beyond 42 weeks then here also there is oligohydramnios okay but uh, decreased urine output renal agenesis polycystic kidneys posterior urethral valve theek okay? please remember in conditions with git anomalies again the problem is decreased swallowing so there will be polyhydramnios hai na poly hoga okay testosterone is secreted by leydig cells what does uh, certainly cell secretes so very importantly mullerian inhibiting substance hai na mis also remember certainly cells also secrete inhibin and they also secrete testosterone binding protein theek hai so mullerian inhibiting substance inhibin testosterone binding protein ye sab kahan se aa raha hai certainly cells se aa raha hai theek granulosa cells are primarily estrogen secreting tumor right please remember even if it is a thecoma it is a sex cord stromal tumor right and it is also a estrogen producing tumor so granulosa cell tumor is also estrogen producing tumor okay acha yahan pe please ye bhi yaad rakhna ki blood test is barrier jo hota hai theek that is made by certainly certainly cells and remember मेन रोल इन स्पर्मैटोजेनेसिस कौन करता है सर्टली सेल्स या लीडिंग सेल्स सो इफ इट इज स्पर्मैटोजेनेसिस इट इज अगेन सर्टली सेल्स ऑल राइट ये भी याद रखना चलो अ वुमन प्रेजेंट्स विद ग्रीनिश डिस्चार्ज फॉर वन मंथ देर इज इरिदीमा एंड मोटाइल ऑर्गेनिज्म आर सीन सो आई हाईलाइटेड द की वर्ड्स एंड देर ऑल फॉर trichomoniasis what are the other keywords that your examiners may use for trichomonas so you know if they use words like green ke sath they may say yellow discharge right so yellow bhi uh, trichomonas hota hai if they say frothy discharge that is also trichomonas then if they say strawberry cervix that is also for trichomonas um then ph remember i told you it has to be more than 4.5 and when we talk about trichomonas they are pear shaped organisms and they have flagella so you can uh, you know see the organism in saline microscopy and remember bachche ki isme jo discharge hota hai green frothy and it is foul smelling drug of choice agar single answer mark karna hai the answer is मेट्रोनिडोल ठीक है लेकिन दिस इज फॉर बोथ बैक्टीरियल वैजिनोसिस ऑल्सो एंड ट्राइकोमोनाज ऑल्सो बट हम अगर एस टी डी किट्स के हिसाब से आंसर करेंगे देन द आंसर हैज टू बी किट टू विच इज ग्रीन किट एंड दैट इज द किट फॉर वेजाइनल डिस्चार्ज है ना ओके वेन डज सेकेंडरी पी पी एच डेवलप सो सेकेंडरी पी पी एच इज द वन दैट हैपन्स बियॉन्ड ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स अप टू ट्वेल्व वीक्स विद इन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स इज प्राइमरी पी पी एच एंड प्राइमरी पी पी एच का मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज इज यूटेराइन एटोनी सेकेंडरी पी पी एच का मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज इज रिटेन्ड प्लासेंटल टिश्यू 
right it is retained placental tissue okay please remember pph may uh, remember it is more than 500 ml after vaginal delivery which is what you are supposed to answer only if they specially say cesarean then the definition changes to more than 1000 ml hai na? okay a couple presents to you with infertility and complaints of menorrhagia semen analysis is normal hsg may distal dilatation hai. what could be the cause so this is likely to be what salpingitis right it is likely to be salpingitis now, why are we going to say that? Because when we say salpingitis, the tubes will show inflammation. And with inflammation, there is hyperemia. So, therefore, yes, they may have abnormal uterine bleeding in women with PID. Right? So, this is actually a case of pelvic inflammatory disease. So, they can have PI, abnormal bleeding, which is usually in the form of menorrhagia or irregular bleeding. But the most common complaint is lower abdominal pain. And tubes, because they are damaged, they can show a block. And if they are blocked, they can be dilated. Right? In general, the most common organism is to be answered as chlamydia. Thick. Or tuberculosis mein bache, please yaad rakhna. The menstrual complaint is amenorrhea followed by oligomenorrhea. Okay, it is usually not in the form of menorrhagia. Thick. And uh, when we talk about pelvic inflammatory disease, remember that this is generally between women who are younger, so 15 to 25 years, but highest risk is women who have multiple sexual partners and if we ask you what is protective then the single best answer for protection kya hoga batao so if we ask you about protection then the single best answer is barrier contraceptives right they are protective okay when we talk about lower abdominal pain what kit do we use? We use kit 6, right? Yellow kit, right? So, this is going to be kit 6 for lower abdominal pain, okay? Lap or yellow in color. Hmm? Hanji. So, now your patient presents with heavy bleeding per vaginum. Uh, she has a history of few weeks of spotting and bleeding for 3 months. She also gives history of a DNC and she is still bleeding, right? Which means, what are we talking about? So, when we say she has been having off and on bleeding per vaginum for three months, there is a history of DNC, right? There is a high possibility and we have also, yeah, so we have done a DNC as well. So, what is the high possibility? The high possibility is that she could have converted into gestational trophoblastic neoplasia, right? She might have uh, converted into a choriocarcinoma although it is an uncommon event that but that can happen especially because there has been a long history after delivery for three months right so a possibility of gtn is there in this patient okay okay what is the complication associated with bolus iv oxytocin so remember Bolus IV oxytocin nahi dete, it is contraindicated. Why? Because it can cause severe hypotension. This hypotension then in, in turn can cause tachycardia, it can even cause uh, arrhythmias, it can even cause an MI or a cardiac arrest. Tick. Then please remember when we talk about oxytocin, you can or you are going to use it because it is the drug of choice for AMTSL. And there we use 10 international units. So we can give this IM or we can give it as IV infusion, not bolus. Remember the half-life of oxytocin is 3 minutes, right? So half-life is 3 minutes, very short half-life. Also, please remember. 
in amtsl this is the most important component right so when we talk about amtsl the most important component is giving the uterotonic agent which is oxytocin theek hai farak kya hai it is the drug of choice for both amtsl that is prophylaxis of pph and it is also the drug of choice for treatment of pph right sirf farak kya hai when it is treatment of pph we begin with a higher dose we begin with 20 international units and we can go up to 40 international units in that case right okay let's look at the next one your patient is presenting to us at 18 weeks with a fasting blood sugar of 126 hba1c of more than 6.5 so these are features of you know pre gestational diabetes these are criteria we use for overt diabetes or pre gestational diabetes remember for uh, gestational diabetes we will do a 2 hour ogtt right which is the dipsy test and if this value is more than or equal to 140 she has gestational diabetes mellitus also remember ki gdm na uh, ka test ye jo hai dipsy test first test has to be done at first antenatal visit and then repeat test has to be done between 24 to 28 weeks the minimum time gap between the two tests should be 4 weeks okay please remember if patient comes beyond 24 weeks then do the test only once you will not do a double testing right double testing is only done if she comes early in pregnancy then we will do it at the first antenatal visit and then later again okay हाँ जी सो फॉल्स टेस्टिंग रिगार्डिंग द इमेज सो वॉट इज दिस दिस इज एम बी ए सिरेंज राइट सो एम बी ए सिरेंज डज नॉट यूज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दिस इज अ ट्रू स्टेटमेंट सो दैट इज वाई वी से इट इज एन ऑल्टरनेटिव टू सक्शन एंड एवैक्यूएशन एंड इट कैन बी यूज अप टू ट्वेल्व वीक्स द प्रेशर इज सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी इफ दैट इज नॉट इन द ऑप्शन यू आर गोइंग टू गो एंड मार्क 600 millimeters of mercury it's not a 30 ml syringe it is a 60 ml syringe remember it is a method of first trimester abortion theek okay? hai second trimester mein what is the surgical method it is called as d and e not d and c so this is dilatation and evacuation d and c was an old method for first trimester abortion theek remember drugs like ethacridine hyperosmolar saline then drug like oxytocin these are all only used for second trimester abortion not first trimester first trimester mein if we have to use drugs it should be a combo of mifi and mizo I have already talked about drug doses in the first CBT of uh, for FMG, so do check it out as well. Okay, so your patient is a primary gravida. She has a blood pressure of one sixty by one twenty. She has increased liver enzymes, increased LDH, and low platelet count. Right, so this is what is HELP syndrome. Right, so this is HELP syndrome. Please remember. in case you know so help me aapko pata hai ki we just have to uh, expand help so this is hemolysis uh, hemolysis kaise dekhte hain peripheral smear pe schistocytes ya we will see serum bilirubin is raised ya we will see ldh is raised hai na elevated liver enzymes hai ye which should be more than twice hai na the normal value lp kya hota hai low platelet count so when all these criteria are met you say it is help syndrome please remember acute fatty liver kab kehte hain so aflp tab kehna hai when there are signs of 
लिवर फेलियर वॉट आर साइंस ऑफ लिवर फेलियर बेटा सो लाइक एनसेफेलोपैथी तो पेशेंट का अगर कॉन्शियसनेस लेवल कम है ओके okay? या फिर देर आर देर इज हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया या फिर अमोनिया लेवल्स आर रेज्ड है ना हाई अमोनिया लो शुगर या पेशेंट डेवलप्स अक्यूट लिवर फेलियर के साथ अक्यूट किडनी फेलियर आल्सो दैट्स कॉल्ड एज हेपैटोरिनल सिंड्रोम एंड एफ में ना ज्यादातर लो प्लेटलेट काउंट की जगह डीआईसी होता है सो दी क्लॉटिंग टेस्ट ए पी टी टी यू नो पी टी टी ये सब डीरेंज होगा ब्लीडिंग टाइम क्लॉटिंग टाइम ठीक सो दिस इज हाउ यू डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन दी टू ओके सो मोस्ट कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव मेथड ऑफ स्क्रीनिंग फॉर सर्वाइकल कैंसर इज गोइंग टू बी वाया ठीक क्योंकि हमसे पूछा गया है कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव बट अदरवाइज बेस्ट पूछा जाए देन इट इज एच पी वी बिकॉज इट इज मोस्ट सेंजिटिव तो एच पी वी होता है फिर वाया होता है फिर पैप्स होता है बट क्योंकि कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव है देन वी कॉन्ट मार्क एच पी वी बिकॉज इट इज एन एक्सपेंसिव टेस्ट द स्क्रीनिंग इंटरवल फॉर एच पी वी इज फाइव ईयरली टू टेन ईयरली फॉर वाया एंड पैप्स इट इज थ्री ईयरली रिमेंबर एज पर डब्ल्यू एच ओ Uh, we have to begin screening at 30 years and we have to stop at 50 years theek hai colposcopy beta is not used for screening it is used for confirmation of diagnosis hai na aur isme ye bhi yaad rakhna colpo mein na green filter hota hai which is used to see the blood vessels so jahan jahan bhi hame abnormal blood vessels milti hai we will take a biopsy theek ओके योर पेशेंट प्रेजेंट्स विद हिस्ट्री ऑफ थ्री प्रीवियस मिड ट्राइमेस्टर मिड मतलब सेकेंड ट्राइमेस्टर अबॉर्शन अभी शी इज प्रेजेंटिंग टू आस एट ट्वेंटी टू वीक्स एंड हर लेंथ इज फिफ्टीन एम एम वॉट कुड बी द कॉज सो वेन दी से सेकेंड ट्राइमेस्टर लॉसेज शॉर्ट सर्विक्स राइट देन दिस इज लाइकली टू बी सर्वाइकल इनकॉम्पिटेंस ओके नाउ प्लीज रिमेंबर द Diagnosis is made when there are more than or equal to three recurrent losses. They are in the second trimester. They are painless. Or, अगर तो ये सब मिल गए तो ठीक है. If all three criteria are not met, then we use cervical length. What is the cutoff? If it is less than twenty-five mm. ठीक. What is the treatment of choice? Cerclage. Which one do we do? McDonald's. What is the other name for McDonald's? Purse string suture. It is ideally the time period is fourteen weeks. You should put it at fourteen weeks, but we can go up to twenty four weeks also. Okay, and please remember this is a vaginal surgery. When do you remove the circlage? Thirty seven. What are contraindications for the circlage? ये भी important है बेटा So contraindication for circlage होता है Most important one that you have to remember is ruptured membrane. इसके बाद <coughs> current infection as well as gross anomaly in the baby. They are all contraindications for circlage. जब भी आप circlage लगाओगे साथ में you also give progesterone for prophylaxis okay please remember short cervix is also risk factor for preterm labor so we can put a circlage even for prophylaxis of preterm labor so your patient comes to labor room at 37 weeks she has mild pain for 10 hours cervix is persistently 4 cm dilated so if you realize your patient is still in the latent phase of labor and if she is in the latent phase we are not going to call it as arrest we cannot make diagnosis of arrest arrest of labor is only and only a diagnosis in the active phase hai na so because she is latent phase the management is observation and maybe we can give pain relief with sedation so we can simply do a wait and watch 
when do you say prolonged latent if it is more than 20 hours in a primary gravida and more than 14 hour in multi gravida that's what is prolonged latent phase and in that case you can give oxytocin if you have already done pain relief and made her rest then you can give oxytocin but not as of now it is not required okay so uh, please go through your dfx textbooks uh, workbook again i have given you criteria for arrest of labor in second stage arrest of labor in the active phase wo zarur ja ke ek bar dekhna hai theek hai please also remember that uh, when we talk about active phase as per the who labor care guide it is now beyond or equal to 5 centimeters as per the older who partograph if they use the word partograph then it is more than or equal to 4 centimeters okay most common cause of dic in obstetrics is abruption Why hota hai? because of release of tissue thromboplastin from the decidua hai na so abruption mein there is premature separation of the placenta what are the keywords a tense uterus a tender uterus uterus where fundal height is more than pog bleeding is dark colored retro placental clot hai na these are all indicators that it is abruption Please remember preeclampsia and trauma are important risk factors for abruption. They may give it as a hint in the exam. Okay. So, abruption ke questions are important. And uh, in general, the preferred mode for abruption is vaginal delivery. Siraf agar likha ho unstable mother. Okay. Ya likha ho fetal distress. Only then go and mark cesarean. Okay? Otherwise, as I said, the preferred mode of delivery in abruption is vaginal. Okay? Identify the mass on top of the uterus, right? So, which means they are asking you this one. So, it is a fibroid, but it is a which fibroid? It is most likely a sub serosal fibroid. Why are we not answering it as pedunculated? Because we don't see the pedicle. Pedicle has to be a stalk, right? So we don't see a stalk here. So it's not pedunculated. It is simply a sub serosal fibroid. Is ka number kya hota hai? Pedunculated ka type 7, right? Figo type 7. Please remember 0, 1, and 2 are Figo stage submucosal. 3 and 4 are intramural, 5, 6, 7 are subserosal, just me say 7 is typically pedunculated and, uh, sorry, pedunculated and subserosal, not submucosal. Pedunculated agar submucosal hai, this is actually a type 0 fibroid, thik hai? this one so if i put it as zero number here then this is what is pedunculated submucosal fibroid okay whenever you say submucosal bache fibroid or uska treatment pooch hai so treatment of choice hota hai hysteroscopic myomectomy okay hysteroscopic myomectomy Okay, so this I have already covered in the PBT number 1. So, false positive bar body is what you see with Klein filters, right? Because I said they are 47XXY male. Normally, males should not have any bar body, but they will have one bar body in Klein filter. I have covered other important things about Klein filter in the first CBT video. So, please see that, okay? Uh, 
ओके टर्नर्स में बच्चे बस एक और चीज याद रखना द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक वर्ड्स आर शॉर्ट स्टैचर ठीक है शील्ड चेस्ट देन लो पोस्टीरियर हेयर लाइन वेब्ड नेक क्यूबिटिस वैलगस ठीक है दीज आर ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट की वर्ड्स then they are at high risk of developing diabetes mellitus they are at high risk of developing hashimotos thyroiditis right uh, not at high risk of sle okay uh, sle or in cheezon ka risk kleinfeld term mein zyada hota hai not in um, turner syndrome they have a high association with cardiovascular anomalies right as well as hearing defects uh, visual problems these are all seen with turners all right acha uh, please remember treatment of choice for turner syndrome agar aayega to it has to be hrt e plus p type of hormone replacement therapy okay a post menopausal asymptomatic woman with this image right so this is a big uh tumor like thing in her pelvis but this is nothing but a calcified fibroid which is subserosal i have done this in the class also if you have attended right so this is a calcified fibroid it's not a bladder stone one because it's not in the center it is eccentric two itna bada bladder stone cannot be asymptomatic why is it not endometriosis uh, you don't there is a very classic appearance of endometrioma you say it is a ground glass appearance and dermoid may uh, you know there is calcification only in one corner not all around or, or everywhere inside the tumor right so sirf ek hi jagah calcified cheeze milti hain that is called as rocky tansky protuberance that's where in the dermoid you will see you know um teeth bone like structures so that is why you will see calcification on one side okay a female after delivery complains of cramps during breastfeeding the hormone responsible is oxytocin so every time the baby suckles there is the milk ejection hormone released right which is oxytocin so this causes contraction of the lactiferous ducts right so the answer is b it is oxytocin prolactin is milk producing hormone please remember the first stimulus okay the first stimulus for breastfeeding after delivery is sudden fall of e and p और उसमें से भी विच इज प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन और ईस्ट्रोजन और उसमें से भी इफ यू हैव टू मार्क वन इट विल बी प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन प्लीज रिमेंबर प्रोलैक्टिन लेवल्स आर हाईएस्ट इन प्रेगनेंसी एंड दैट टू इन दी थर्ड ट्राइमेस्टर द लेवल्स फॉल बाय 50 परसेंट आफ्टर डिलीवरी ऑल दो इट स्टिल इज हाई इनफ फॉर लैक्टेशन बट दे फॉल आफ्टर डिलीवरी ठीक है ओके अति थर्टी टू वीक्स प्रेगनेंट फीमेल कंप्लेन्स ऑफ वेजाइनल ब्लीडिंग ऑन पी ए एग्जाम द यूट्रस इज टेंडर फीटल हार्ट रेट साउंड आर एबसेंट सो एज आई सेट दीज आर द की वर्ड्स फॉर एब्रप्शन सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैम बिकॉज द बेबी इज ऑलरेडी डेड रिमेंबर द मोड ऑफ डिलीवरी इन दिस पेशेंट इज गोइंग टू बी वेजाइनल डिलीवरी प्लासेंटा प्रीविया में इट इज अ रिलैक्सड यूटरस it is non tense non tender and usually the fundal height is equal to the pog in placenta previa sometimes it can be even less because of the presence of transverse lie so these are features of placenta previa i've already given you features of abruption in the previous question remember here it will be bright red bleeding not altered bleeding in abruption it's altered dark in abruption and here in placenta previa patient may have warning hemorrhages which are not seen with abruption right so you should know the key points go to dfx 
DFX covers everything. Do a rapid revision of Abzan Gaini only through your DFX and you will get almost every question from it. Okay. So, all the best. I hope you do a really, really good exam and come to us for an interview. Take care, everyone.